Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. In this session, let's discuss about the last part of the earth that is about the distribution of oceans and continents. Continental Drift Theory So it was Alfred Wegener, he was a German meteorologist and he put forth a comprehensive argument in the form of Continental Drift Theory in the year 1912. And this theory was regarding about the distribution of oceans and the continents. And according to Wegener, all the continents, it formed a single continental mass and a mega ocean surrounded by the continents. This supercontinent was named as Pangaea, which means all earth. The mega ocean, it was called as Panthalassa or Tethys Ocean which means all of water. Wegener argued that around 200 million years ago, the supercontinent Pangaea began to split and this Pangaea first broke into two large continental mass, Laurasia and Gondwana, which forms the northern and southern components. Laurasia and Gondwana land, it continued to break into various smaller continents and that exists as a modern world today. Evidences in support of continental drift theory, the matching of continents, that is jigs of it. The shoreline of Africa and the South America, which faces each other, they have a remarkable and unmistakable match. And it may be noted that map produced using a computer program to find the best fit of Atlantic margin, it was presented by Bullard in the year 1964. And it proved to be quite perfect and the match was tried at 1000 fathom line instead of the present shoreline. The continents look like they could fit together like a puzzle pieces. The other evidences are rocks of the same age across the oceans. The radiometric dating methods developed in the recent period, they have correlated the rock formation from the different continents across the vast ocean. The belt of the ancient rocks of 2000 million years from the Brazil coast matches with those in the Western Africa. The earliest marine deposits uh, along the coastal lines of South America and Africa are of the age of Jurassic age and this suggests that the ocean did not exist prior to that time. Delight. It is a sedimentary rock and it was formed out of deposits of glaciers. And the Gondwana system of sediments from India, it is known to have its counterpart in six different land masses of the southern hemisphere. At the base, the system has thick delight which indicates extensive and prolonged glaciations. Counterparts of their succession are found in Africa, Falkland Island, Madagascar, Antarctica and Australia. This glacial delight, it provides unambiguous evidence of paleoclimates and also of drifting of continents. Placer deposits A placer deposit is also called as placer. It is an accumulation of valuable minerals which is formed by gravity separation from a specific source rock during the sedimentary process. The name is from the Spanish word placer, meaning alluvial sand. Distribution of fossils So when identical species of plants and animals adapted to living on land or in fresh water, they are found on either side of the marine barriers. A problem arises regarding accounting for such distribution. The observations that lemurs occur in India Madagascar and Africa led some to consider a contiguous landmass. Lemuria linking these three landmasses, Mesosaurus was a small reptile adapted to shallow brackish water. The skeletons of this are found only in two localities, the southern Cape province of South Africa and Iravar formations of Brazil. The two localities presently are 4,800 km apart and with an ocean in between them. Force for drifting Wegener suggested 
that these forces are responsible for the drifting of the continents, which was caused by pole fleeing force and tidal force. The polar fleeing force and it is caused by the rotation of the earth. And the second force that was suggested by Wegener was tidal force and it is due to the attraction of the moon and sun that develops the tides. And finally sun. These forces it was considered inadequate by most of the scholars. Post drift studies. From the continental drift most of the evidence was collected from the continental areas in the form of distribution of flora and fauna deposits like tillite. A number of discoveries during the post-war period it added new information to geological literature and particularly the information collected from the ocean floor mapping it provided new dimensions for the study of distribution of oceans as well as continents. Convectional current theory The core is radioactive and it releases heat to the mantle surrounding it. The mantle floats on the core so the mantle is directly affected by the core. The core's radioactive energy it causes the lower mantle to get hot less dense and then rise. The plastic basalt rock rises, it cools and it falls back and this is a convection current. Mapping of the ocean floor The research to map the oceanic floor in the post-war period, it provided a detailed picture of ocean relief and indicated the existence of submerged mountain ranges as well as deep trenches, which is mostly located closer to the continent margins. The mid-oceanic ridges they were found to be most active in terms of volcanic eruptions. Ocean floor configuration and this consists of continental shelf. A continental shelf is a portion of a continent that is submerged under an area of relatively shallow water known as shelf sea. Next comes continental slope and this continental slope it is also a portion of the continent that is submerged under an area of a relatively shallow water and much of the shelf they are exposed during the glacial periods and interglacial periods. The shelf surrounding an island is known as insular shelf. Sea mount A sea mount is a mountain rising from the ocean floor and does not reach the water surface and thus it is not an island, islet or cliff rock. Sea mounts are generally formed from extinct volcanoes that rise abruptly and are usually found rising from the sea floor. Volcanic island It rises from the sea floor but reaches above the ocean surface, sometimes just barely. An island is a solitary mountain formed by the volcanic activity. Continental rise. The continental rise, it is an underwater feature that is found between the continental slope and abyssal plain. This feature, it can be found all around the world. And this represents the final stage in the boundary between continent and the deepest part of the sea. Abyssal plain. It is an underwater plain on the deep ocean floor and it is usually found at a depth between 3000 meters and 6000 meters. Mid-Ocean Ridge A mid-ocean ridge, it is a seafloor mountain system. It is formed by the plate tectonics. Rift Valley It is a linear shaped lowland between several highlands or mountain ranges that is created by the action of geologic rift or fault. Next comes trench. A trench is a type of excavation or depression in the ground that is generally deeper than it is wide and narrow when compared with its length. These are the configuration of ocean floor. Plate tectonics. A tectonic plate is a massive irregularly shaped slab of solid rock it is generally composed of both continental and oceanic lithosphere. Plates move horizontally over the asterosphere as a rigid units. 
The lithosphere includes the crest and top mantle with its thickness ranging from 5 to 100 km in oceanic parts and about 200 km in continental areas. A plate may be referred as a continental plate or oceanic plate depending on which the two occupy a larger portion of the plate. The theory of plate tectonic, it proposes the earth's lithosphere and divided into seven major and some minor plates. The major plates are Antarctica and surrounding oceanic plate, North American plate and South American plate, Pacific plate, Indo-Australian plate, African plate with the Eastern Atlantic floor plate, Eurasian plate and the adjacent oceanic plate. And some of the minor plates are Philippine plate, Cocos plate, Zuan de Fuca plate, Caribbean plate, Arabian plate, Scotia plate and Nazca plate. In the next session, let's discuss about the landforms. See you in the next session. Thank you.